Today I'm going to talk to you about something awesome. It's called Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to show you everything you need to know so you can get started with your projects as quickly as possible. Let's take a look. So Jupyter Notebook is becoming extremely popular in the field of data science and machine learning. And rightly so, because it's this kind of new way of creating a document where you write your code, but you're also able to add images, graphs, equations, and markdown text alongside it, all inside of one document. And just when you think it couldn't get any better than that, it's all done inside of a web browser through a Python distribution like Anaconda. This is so useful because not only can you explain and demonstrate what you've done, but you can essentially give the document to somebody else and they can replicate all your results because they're able to rerun the code. And this is great for things like tutorials and research because it brings the practical and theoretical sides of what you're trying to do together. And if you're trying to learn or explain something you've done, there's no better way to do it. Okay, so this is a demo notebook that I downloaded from the web. And it's basically a physics lecture inside of a Jupyter notebook. And you can see that we've got a lot of mixed content in here. And we've got, you know, at the top we've got a heading. We've got regular text with links, code, uh, images, equations. We can go down. We've got this object here. We've got graphs. You know, there's just so much in here that makes it awesome. All in one place. And we can change any of it at any point because we've we've essentially got all the code. So for example, if I want to change that heading, I can just, I don't know, I can just add one, two, three, four at the end. And there we go. If I scroll down and I execute the code cells, because we're able to, and say I want to change the content of this object. So this object prints whatever is contained within that object h, right? But say I wanted to half it, so I could do h over 2. And that's halved the values inside of that object. And that's just a, a demonstration of how you can alter the notebook. You know, I didn't create any of this, but I'm able to pick it straight up and change things. So if, if you're in an area of research and somebody publishes a notebook, you know, you can you can look at it and start playing around with it yourself pretty much instantly and that is awesome so to install Jupyter we're going to use Anaconda and I highly recommend you do the same if you don't have Anaconda installed there's a link in the description below where you can get it uh, we're going to be using the Anaconda prompt so you want to open the prompt activate the environment that you're working in if you don't understand environments there's also a link to a video that I've made in the description below but once you've activated your environment we want to conda install Jupyter and that'll give you everything you need in order to run Jupyter Notebook. So once you've run that installation we need to run Jupyter Notebook and we can do this by typing Jupyter space notebook hit enter and that launches a server. Now you want to keep this prompt window open when you're running Jupyter Notebook because it acts as a server. So in the browser you should be greeted with a directory like this which is your Jupyter server and this directory is equivalent to the following directory in your file system. So it'll be on your local disk, users, your user, and in your user there's a folder called Anaconda3. And this is the exact same as this directory, which is what we're working out of. And then anywhere in here you can go to your environments, so in my case TensorFlow GPU. Uh, go to anything like tutorial, you can create a new notebook make sure you choose the, the correct kernel so tensorflow gpu and we now have a brand new notebook with our correct kernel as tensorflow gpu a kernel basically runs your code and you need to make sure that you're using the right kernel and as i explained earlier there's a video where i explain anaconda environments and kernels i highly recommend you watch that i leave a link to it here there's a card click on that and you'll go to the video but basically we need to make sure we're using the correct kernel so that our code can be executed properly using the proper environment. So if you click this kernel tab here, you can come down to change kernel and any kernels that you've installed will be listed here. Now you want to use a kernel that's been installed to your environment. So I'm going to use TensorFlow GPU. 
and you can see here in the top right that displays which kernel you are currently using and there's a little circle next to it and if you hover over it it says kernel idle now if you anytime you run code this will fill up and go gray and it'll say kernel busy okay so what I'm going to do now is sort of guide you through the general usability of Jupyter Notebook and I'm just going to show you the sort of basics that you need to get up and running so first thing I'm going to say is at the top is um, untitled so that is the title of the notebook so you can rename this to whatever you want and change it so that's important so you know which notebooks which and if you go back to the directory you can see that it's changed so on the toolbar at the top we've got the regular kind of things you know file edit but you can have a look at those in your own time they're pretty self-explanatory the help option at the end I would highly recommend you look at it's got keyboard shortcuts in there and also uh, a UI tour of Jupyter Notebook and that's extremely helpful so definitely have a look at that they've also got references for pandas numpy all the good stuff so underneath that toolbar we've got the save icon then we've got the next one which is insert cell and this is what we're going to do first so if we if we press that you can see that we add cells now cells in Jupyter Notebook are a good way of sort of breaking up your code or your markdown into sections you know so it makes it that bit more modular and you can actually move the cells around so for example if I uh, just for a second I'm going to turn that into a markdown cell and I'll, I'll show you how to do that but if I just type hello world in there so that's now markdown text but if I wanted to move it up I can use this up arrow and it just moves up to the top and obviously you can move it back down if you want to but for now we're just going to move it up to the top and basically you've got two types of cells there's a code cell which you obviously write code in and a markdown cell which you can use to do all that kind of cool formatting that you saw in the previous example so to switch between a code cell and a markdown cell you can use the simple keyboard shortcuts so make sure you're not clicked and edit in a cell because obviously any key you press will just show up like this so click off the cell somewhere to the left and to change to a markdown cell you want to hit M on the keyboard and that gets rid of the little brackets next to the cell which means it's now a markdown cell and in there we can enter any markdown code that we want so to change back to a code cell you want to hit Y on the keyboard and then you'll see those brackets pop up again and that means we have a code cell so to write code in any of the cells you do what you usually do you know you just write your code so for example uh, let's import pandas right shift enter is what you use to execute the cell so as I did there I finished writing my code you want to hold shift and press enter at the same time and that executes the cell now obviously there's no output after importing so if I show you again if we do a print hello world standard example shift enter to execute the code cell you'll see that our output is printed directly underneath the cell now this is awesome because it keeps everything nice and neat and you can see the exact output from each cell as you go through the document so if I do a for loop for example let's do for i in range maybe 0 to 10 and we'll print i so we can see executing that cell prints 0 to 9 as you'd expect but what I love about Jupyter Notebook is if I change that for to 1000 for example now you might think oh that's going to print a really long list and our document's going to be huge but if we run it actually puts it in a nice container with this scroll bar here so you can still view the output if you want to but it's nicely contained within this scrolling window and that's really awesome sometimes when you're, you're using pandas and you want to print part of a data frame and things like that uh, you, you, you'll probably find that very useful now I'm going to show you how to write markdown text so with the bottom cell we're going to change to a markdown cell so we hit M on the keyboard 
now we can click inside the cell and we can type wherever we want. So we can type, this is markdown text. Shift enter again to execute the cell. Even though it's a markdown cell, you still need to um, run that cell. So it registers as markdown cell. So we can see there that we've got text. Now if we want to edit any cell, you just click on it or you double click on it and you can it goes back into editing mode and you can edit the cell. So if we go to the start of this one again and we want to put a heading C. Now there's a lot of uh, markdown to learn, especially on a Jupyter Notebook. So I've got a lot of cheat sheets that are awesome. So there's a link below which goes to my website where there'll be cheat sheets for you to download. So you can just look at it, reference the markdown and it, it makes your life so much easier. So for example, if we use the hash key and um, we just do hello, so you can see that creates a heading. So if you execute the cell, we've got heading. But if we use two hash keys, it's a smaller heading, right? So now if we want to do bullet points, you can use the dash. So for example, we've got one, let's do two and again, three. So if we execute the cell, they change the bullet points. So you can see how this is really a great way to write a bit of code, maybe explain it underneath or above, and you can really fully explain everything you're doing to somebody else. Like, it's, it's just awesome. that There's so many of them there for machine learning, and you learn so much just from reading a notebook. And for research especially, I think it's amazing because Usually, you know, you read a research paper and it's just full of equations and things, but if there's a notebook that goes with it, you can really dig into it and, and understand it a lot better, in my opinion. So another thing worth mentioning is that we don't have to run each cell every single time, right? So like we've done before, you don't have to go through and do shift enter, shift enter every single time. You can run the whole notebook at once. So on the top user bar, you can see a uh, cell. So if we go down first to all output and click clear, that'll clear all the cell outputs. So now if we hit cell and run all, you can see that it runs the whole notebook. And if you click cell again, you see there's other options in there like run all below, run all above and things like that. Again, have a good look through the toolbar. There's a lot in here that I'm probably not gonna have time to mention in this video. But you also get sort of errors error logging in Jupyter Notebook. So if I try and import panda instead of pandas, you can see we've got an error and it says no module named panda. And that's kind of useful. It's useful to a point. It's not very in-depth sort of debugging. It just kind of gives you enough to point you in the right direction, especially when you get into TensorFlow and things like that. It can, it becomes kind of useless at that point, but it, it does kind of help point you in the right direction. So this next part is going to be about more of the advanced features of Jupyter Notebook. And basically we can run commands from within cells. And much like you would do inside this anaconda prompt, you know, you can enter pip commands and, and things like that. You can do this from within the cell. So for example, we can do a um, pip freeze. Our pip freeze command just fetches the Python input packages that you have installed and what versions. So if we if we execute the cell, you can see that we get an output of the exact output you get inside of the Anaconda prompt. And this is really handy when you know you say you download a new notebook and you need to install a Python input package. You can just do it straight from within the notebook as opposed to going back and forth between the prompt. So that's a neat little feature that you might want to know about. The next one is uh, line and cell magics. Now, these are basically commands that you can execute within a line or a cell. So to determine between a line or a cell, you use a percentage sign. So if we do a percentage sign and we do uh, ls magic, that will list the magic commands available. And you can see the available line magic start with a single percentage sign and the available cell magic start with a double percentage sign. So what we can do with line magics is, say for example, we want to print the working directory. You can see this, 
this one here. So if we do percentage print working directory and run it, it gives us the working directory. And these are these are they're kind of handy. You don't need to use them all the time, but sometimes you may need to, and they are there if you want to. So um, go up, go and read up on the documentation, and you never know there may be something here that'll save you some time, and it's awesome. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, crashing in Jupyter Notebook. So sometimes your kernel will just stop working for no reason at all, especially if you're running sort of TensorFlow backend with Keras or something like that. Um, it'll just freeze and you'll see the kernel busy at the top and it, it just never stops being busy. So what you can do is you can try and hit the stop button here which will interrupt the kernel. Most of the time this will work, but usually when it crashes, when you try to interrupt the kernel, it still won't stop. So what you can do is you can click kernel on the toolbar at the top and restart or shut down. If you do restart, that tends to work, but the problem with restarting the kernel is that you will need to rerun all the cells. So say for example, you declare a variable at the top and you, you use it at the bottom. If you go back to the bottom and try and rerun the bottom cell, it won't know about that variable. So you have to go back and rerun all the cells. And that isn't a problem because as I said before, you can just do cell run all and it'll do that for you. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is exporting from Jupyter Notebook. And this is my favorite part because once you've created a little document and you wanna share it with others, you can export it as a HTML or a PDF. So you can do download as, sorry, go to file, download as, and you can see we've got a lot of options in here. And if we export it as HTML, you'll see it'll download as it would in Chrome as a HTML. And if we double click it, this is our notebook. But what it does do is it doesn't always support the scrolling that I talked about before. So if you do print a long list, it will, in the HTML, it will be a long list like this. But as you can see, the content of the notebook is there. And you can share this with anybody, you know, you can put it up on a server, whatever. But the fact that it's that easy to share your code with others, with descriptions, with graphs, with images, it's just amazing, really. And you can see why Jupyter Notebook has become so popular for Python and machine learning. So one last thing I wanted to show you is this awesome little helper tool that's built into Jupyter Notebook and not, not a lot of people know about it. So as an example, let's import NumPy as MP. Now usually um, you wouldn't know all the commands you need to use all the time and it's good to use the documentation obviously to reference but we can do numpy dot and then hit the tab key and it offers us suggestions so if you start typing so if i did an a it'll filter down much like you'd see in visual studio and things like that so it's quite basic but it's handy to have there you know and if you do a shift tab if we go back do a shift tab this brings up some of the documentation so whatever command or whatever method you're trying to call you can do a shift shift tab and it'll bring up the information about that method and this is kind of as i said it's kind of handy it's nice to see it there in jupyter notebook um most of the time i've always got the documentation open in a browser anyway and that's kind of useful but i just wanted to show you because it is a neat little feature and i think we may see more development on that in the future so before you go, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. If you found this video helpful, please consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate this since it helps my channel grow and I put a lot of effort into making these videos. If you want to support me in other ways, there's a link in the description below where you can do that, but it's up to you. That's about it from me. I hope you all have an awesome day. Take it easy.